let's do a lab of friction on an incline. When we tilt this plane, the block wants to slide down, but there's a static friction holding it in place. Have we reached the maximum static friction? Nope, we can tilt it higher. That component of the weight going down the plane gets bigger, static friction gets bigger, keeps getting bigger, until all of a sudden we reach the maximum angle that the block will remain at rest. Your goal is to measure this angle. Now before you get started, you wanna make sure this is clean. Wipe it all down again. And as you tilt, you wanna make sure that you're tilting slowly. Because if you start to shake it, it's gonna go down early. You wanna make sure that it's pressed in good and seated. And then as you tilt, so really slow, until all of a sudden, it goes. Now you have to measure the angle. Everybody would like to use the protractor, but that's kind of hard to do. You're really better off with a meter stick. Measure the length of the whole ramp, and then when you reach the maximum angle, you hold the meter stick vertically and measure from the surface of the table to the bottom of the ramp. That's where the pivot is. Now, once you measure that maximum static angle, you can use that angle to try to figure out what the coefficient of static friction is. Okay, to give you a hint on how to find that coefficient of static friction, you should draw a free body diagram. You've got the weight going down. You can break that up into components. You've got the static maximum friction going up at that angle, and you have the normal force. You've got everything you need to go calculate the coefficient of static friction. Once you have that coefficient of static friction, you should compare it to the one you found when we were pulling it on the flat. We'll think about that. Once you do this lab, you can put the weights in the block and press it down again and then start tilting it again. What do you think is going to happen? If we add more weight, would that make it want to go down sooner? Maybe it'll press it against the plane more or get even a higher angle. But that's something for you to try out and discover. Well, that was static friction. Now we're going to explore kinetic friction as well. You're gonna pull this plane up a little bit and then tap it. You wanna keep tapping it as you move it up until you find the angle at which it just goes down at a slow, constant velocity. Well, you can use that angle to calculate the kinetic coefficient of friction. How are you gonna do that? Hey, it's the same idea. You're gonna draw a free body diagram and look at the formula for the kinetic coefficient of friction. When you get the coefficient of kinetic friction on the incline, compare it to what you got when we had the block being pulled at a constant velocity on the flat plane. Then you can put the weights in it and see what happens. Will they go down sooner at a constant velocity? or will you have to tilt it higher to get it to go down at a constant velocity? Now in the last part of the lab, you're gonna set the plane up on an angle using the books. You can measure that angle with the meter stick. And then you're gonna predict, using your coefficients of friction, how hard it will be to start moving the block up the plane. Then you can get your spring scale and see if you're right. How hard would you have to pull to get it started up the plane? You could turn it around and see how hard you would have to pull to get it to start down the plane. You can see how hard it takes to move it at a constant velocity, down and up the plane. 